PGA Tour price check time. Need your best DFS plays for each price range for the Arnold Palmer Invitational at Bay Hill, teeing off tomorrow. So Rom's the top price golfer at 11,400. Now let's include Sung JM, who sits right under that uh, 10K range at 9,900. So like, who's your favorite play from those six golfers at the top, Jeff? I mean, I don't really love any of these guys this week, if I'm being honest. I, I think it's a good week to almost fade the top bunch. I know we've got a, a, a lot of elite players in here, but you, you would create unique lineups if you did that. I'm looking at Scheffler and Matsuyama for the simple fact that we're getting a price break on them over Rom and Rory. Uh, I know Rory has kind of made Bay Hill his playground, and I think he's obviously him and Rom both make for very safe cash game plays. But I, I feel like the upside with Scheffler and Matsuyama at, uh, at cheaper prices is, is pretty solid this week. I mean, T to green, these guys have been very good. I would lean Scheffler slightly as, as the target for me. Um, you know, when, when Scotty Scheffler has been sort of in form, you look even just throughout his short career, he's typically rallied together some top tens. Uh, he, he's got some pretty strong, you know, putting splits over his last little bit. And he just looks uber confident. He was in contention here in 2020 as well, kind of fell apart. But that year, a lot of people fell apart in the wind. I think Scotty Scheffler at 10-6 um, gives you a good price break over the top two guys and, and carries a lot of upside just with the way he's playing. Reed, you want to go contrary and fade all those guys at the top? No, Jeff's a moron. He okay. can't fit all those guys at the top. No, cool. I, look, I get what he's saying. He's not a moron. I get what he's saying. Uh, like, And it makes a lot of sense when you take a look at how you want to be unique in this lineup because a lot of guys up here have been talked about quite a bit, right? Namely, Rory. I remember my article, and it's hard not to write up Rory because all the stats line up that he's going to play well. He always does. That's sort of a quote-unquote cop-out, not to you know really put myself on the back burner here, but – if I'm going from a GPP standpoint, I mean, Victor Hovland is a guy who's not necessarily someone that you see pumped up quite a bit on the DFS side. Betting, yeah, for whatever reason, when he's at plus 1,800, plus 1,500, people want to bet him. But on the DFS side, when you have those guys, he's in that sandwich pricing of 10-8. I get why Matsuyama's here. Tita Green, he's a master at this course, but he just can't putt. This guy is about, when you talk about total driving, when you talk about distance and accuracy, he is one of the best in his short career right now up the guys at the top. So give me Victor Holland because right now his roster percentage, his projected roster percentage looks lowest of the top five. All right, Len, what's your strategy here? Well, if, if I wasn't completely awake on the West Coast uh, just yet, Jeff woke me up by saying, <laughs> let's uh, let's skip all these guys. I mean, I'm going to kind of think I, I could see a reason for any of them and all of them. They're all playing pretty well right now. Maybe the only one who's not playing well is John Rahm for John Rahm and, you know, fade the number one guy at your own peril at, at any time. Um, you know, that said, Roar, as Reed said, Rory just aligns so nicely with this course. He's top 10 almost every year. And I also do like Victor Hovland. Um, you know, putting is an issue with Hovland, but he's putting much better lately. He's now 34th on tour in strokes game putting. The wedge play still an issue. But of the top six guys, um, I also like Sung J.M. Sung J.M. really burned me. I only told half the world that Sung J.M. was going to do great at the Honda. Uh, and that didn't quite pan out. But it still holds true this week. This course, a tee to green course, aligns really nicely with his game. And it shows when he had a couple of top threes in two of the past three years. So um, there's a lot to like for me in that. I get the ownership is going to be high. But just from who's going to do well on the leaderboard, I like these guys. Quick prediction, Jesse. Uh, Victor Hovland missed cut. Losing strokes around the green in Phoenix. Now it comes to a, a tougher course in Bay Hill. Ooh, I don't like it. All right, uh, mark the tape. Like mark the tape. We're going to clip that and... <laughs> We're going to tweet it out. All right. Well, it's not fair Jeff, because, because Jeff mentions every single guy that he likes in this range. So it's really like, Wait there's we no get to like, the next oh, this range, guy's going to I like everyone cut. in the next range. So yeah. Just okay. We'll get to it. We'll okay. Yeah. Up. Jeff, go ahead. Let's move to the middle of the pack. A lot of good players to choose from between 8K, 9,500. Who's the pick in that range? Yeah. Look, if, if I'm throwing out crazy ideas, like maybe fading everybody over 10K this week, obviously I have to, we have to target some guys in the 9K range. <laughs> Will is Will Zalatoris and Matthew Fitzpatrick are, are, are you know one neck and neck for, for top plays this week. Um, Zalatoris just playing beautifully tee to green. The approach plays off the charts was T10 here last year. I understand the putter has to show up, but look, Willie Z has shown that you know he can get a little bit hot with that flat stick at some point. And if it happens this week, I think he's gonna have a very sh good shot of, of bringing home his first win. And then on the other side, Matthew Fitzpatrick, I, I'm just gonna flat out say probably still my top play this week. I get that some people are or, you know, it's a polarizing player, but 
Tina Green, he has started the season probably better than he ever has. And in terms of putting, we don't have to worry about that because this guy leads basically almost all the career splits in terms of putting on Bermuda surfaces. And he's just a really good all-around player uh, around the green. So if, if that approach game and, and like the total driving stats keep up for Fitzpatrick here, if his putter gets hot, I mean, he, I think he's got a great chance of winning too. So pair Willie Z and Matthew Fitz, and uh, I think that's a good way to start a balanced lineup this week. All right, Len, what do you think in that – Eight to ninety-five hundred range. Yeah, I, you know, I'm a little bit more in alignment with Jeff there. I do like Zalatoris. Yeah, the putter is an issue. I don't know if he can putt well enough to win this tournament. I think you're going to have to putt a little bit. At this, uh, traditionally, you do maybe not last year, but uh, over the last decade, the winners have been good putters. Uh, but the rest of his game is good enough for a top 10, and he's down at 9,400. I think you can make that work in your lineup. Matt Fitzpatrick, uh, yeah, every year, top 10 in this tournament as well. You know, right below him at 9,100, Mark Leishman, I think, is really getting overlooked, um, maybe even by me. Um you know, he has won this tournament. He's finished second. He's not really at the top of his game right now, but he is re and I, I, I think he will be low owned compared to a lot of the guys we've already mentioned there. And, you know, moving all the way down to 8,100, I think every time I'm here, I say Keith Mitchell, Keith Mitchell, Keith Mitchell, and he's at 81. I'm going to say him again, like him a lot this week, four top 12s already uh, in 2022 alone. All right, Reed, what say you about this range? Yeah, this is Jeff. This is Jeff's MO. I've, I've worked with Jeff, I think, every single day for the last five years, and it's the <laughs> same story. This guy says Victor Hovland is poured around the green. You know what Matty Fitzpatrick has done, Jeff, for the last 24 rounds? He's 97. He's lost in four of his last six measured rounds for Matty Fitzpatrick. But, hey, if you want to save the $1,000 and go for Matt Fitzpatrick for a T10 again, I get it. Look, and we're talking about DFS, so it does make a little sense. That's what you got to do. You got to give Jeff a little jab to the side, but then – Pick him back up when he falls down because he needs it. So Matty Fitzpatrick, not a bad call. No one's talking about the beige bomber, Adam Scott. This guy is coming in like wearing maybe a different sweater than beige. Maybe it's like maroon red this this week. But this guy is fantastic. When you talk about at this course, it sets up for someone like Scotty, right? It sets up for someone who has that type of game where driving is, you know, it is a premium here. And one of the best drivers over the last, I don't know, 100 years has been Adam Scott. It's just the matter of can this guy, like we always talk about with a, with a golfer of his profile, can he make putts? And at this course, and even if you take a look at what he did at Genesis, he gained like seven and a half strokes putting, right? So the broomstick is working. The approach game is working for Scotty. And he finished with a top three here. So if you follow Jeff at the fantasy grind, he puts out these trends at the beginning of the week. And Scotty kind of fits one of those trends, right? Of having a top five at this tournament. It was like back in 2000 and whatever it was, like eight or 11. So it was a while back. But I like Scotty right there at nine. I think he's at nine flat. Yeah, nine thousand dollars. Give me Scotty. All right. Uh, is there a golfer that you like under 7,500 for like some value here, Len? Yeah, uh, there are a couple of guys. I do want to mention one just above 7,500, and that is Justin Rose at 77. I think he's another guy who's going to be under the radar. And if you look at him the last few years here. Um, you know, he withdrew from the tournament. He missed the cut the previous year. But last year, he was in the top 10 when he woke up on Saturday with a bad back and had to withdraw. He couldn't play, he tried a few holes and had to leave. But he and he's had good success at this course through the years, played it a ton, a second, a third, um, some other top 10s. But moving down into the range, you asked about 7,500. Chris Kirk, uh, he did it again last week. He finished seventh, and that was with a triple late in the tournament. For whatever reason, he has the best tee to green numbers of his career, and he's been around a long time. This is a perfect example of a course where you need to be strong tee to green, 7,500, and all the way down at 7,100. Lanto Griffin usually does his best work early in the season, but he was 21st here last year. He's made cuts two of the two times. Uh, and he's coming off a pretty good West Coast swing where he had a couple of top 20s. I like him as well at 71. All right, Jeff, value. Where are you going? So uh, when you're going under 7,500, I, I think that the safer plays are guys like Lucas Glover and Keegan Bradley. Great course history. Great tee to green players. I mean, if their putter shows up, they could easily challenge for like a top 20, maybe even a top 10. 
But I think for GPPs, I, I'm going to throw it out. I, I think Ricky Fowler pops this week. And, and, you know, Len mentioned this. You've got to be able to handle the greens at Bay Hill. These things are fast. And typically we see most of the players in the top 10, they're gaining like multiple strokes on the greens. Ricky changed putters two weeks ago. He gained over five strokes on the greens at PJ National. I think that confidence seeps through here. He's in a home game here, like near his, his house in Florida. I, you know, the, the approach game and, and the tee to game wasn't that bad on the West Coast. And now he's made two cuts in a row. I really do. I'm not suggesting Ricky Fowler challenges for the win this week, but I think at 6,900, he pops a little bit here. And I think he's going to pay off this salary. So obviously, you know, we're talking like a, a player who's probably going to be like 2% owned in GPPs. And that's the only place you should be deploying Ricky Fowler is, is in like a high variance, big field GPP lineup. But I'm, I'm going to go out and say Ricky Fowler pops with the top 20 this week. Okay, Reed, golfer under 7,500. I got to love Jeff and he's staying with Ricky Fowler. He's been touting him for like a month. Love it. Don't uh, leave your wingman. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, if you follow at Len Hochberg on Twitter, you'll see that under $7,000, Party Marty Laird is someone that I do like. He won this tournament way back when, but let's stick above 7,000 because that's a little bit, a little bit dicey just because it's been a while since we've seen uh, Martin Laird do anything on the PGA Tour. It's Ian Poulter. And look, Poulter is someone that you, you can easily pencil in like, you know, like around the green short game, right? Putting is going to be his thing. But look, let's take a look at what he did last week. He gained through approach. He was 26th at Honda. He didn't play well, right? If you look at his stats and you look deeper, he did not play well. His scorecard had like more squares and circles. Uh, so more, more bogeys or bogeys plus than it did the others, right? Which is birdies and pars. The thing about Poulter though, when he gets like we talk about into Florida, onto these Bermuda greens when putting is a premium and you don't necessarily have everything with ball striking. Those are the guys you want that can pop with the putter. And we know Poulter, he's one of the best. And when he's in Florida, you got to give him a nod. So I believe he's right around that 7K number. So give me Ian Poulter. All right. Who is winning the Arnold Palmer Invitational? And thus, you absolutely need them in your DFS lineup, Jeff. Matthew Fitzpatrick. And especially after Reed besmirched his around the green play. <laughs> You know, Matthew Fitzpatrick doesn't have to play good around the green, so it'll sink all his 40 footers. So <laughs> stuff that in your in your sack there, Reed. All right, Reed, what do you think? <laughs> Where's the sack to stuff? Something? Stuff in your sack. <laughs> yeah, stuff in your sack, Santa. Uh, give me Sanjay. <laughs> Len, we got to stick with this guy, right? I, I told the other half of the world to play Sanjay, and that didn't work out. So the entire world is probably mad at both of us. But give me Sanjay. It's too hard to fake Sanjay on Bermuda and Florida. So give me Sanjay in. All right, Len, who are you going with? Yeah, it's so hard to go back to a guy who burned you uh, last week. So I'm going to just go to another guy who burns me all the time and Rory <laughs> McIlroy. And, you know, just the fact that I'm picking him uh, means something terribly will go awry, probably around 16 or 17 on Sunday. But just everything aligns here. He's really playing very well everywhere in the world right now. He is fifth in the world. He's ahead of Justin Thomas, ahead of Dustin Johnson, ahead of DeShambo Kepka. He is really at the top of his game or near the top of his game just when he has to be.